All right, pleasure to have you back here on The Morning Brew. I'm Larry Ahrens with Amber Hendren, and we are having a great show today, and that's going to continue with our next guest. Our next guest is uh, brought to you by Albuquerque Arts and Entertainment Magazine that has now merged with ABQ Free Press. Same great uh, arts coverage, but uh, with a really healthy dose of investigative journalism uh, with the good folks at ABQ Free Press. So. Uh, find an issue near you and take a look at uh, all the great coverage at ABQ Free Press. Our guest today is a Western art expert. And if you love Western art like I do, uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome to our show today Mr. Doug Johns joining us today. Doug, great to meet you. Thank you. The same to you, Larry. Thank you. Uh, Western art, how do you define it? Uh, I, I think of Frederick Remington right off mm -hmm. the top of my head. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> you are not untypical. <laughs> okay. Frederick Remington, Charlie Russell, yeah. basically immediately those, conjure those up Those are the, the icons. West. That's right. Yeah. And basically I define Western art as art of the West. Sure. Art of the American West. And it's a huge category in, in the art world. And uh, tell us a bit about your professional background with this. I, I've spent about uh, the past 30 years in the appraisal, auction, and acting as a dealer in, the, in rare Western books and Western art. And uh, I spent 27 years in San Francisco as a rare book auctioneer, selling some fine art at that time. Moved to Albuquerque three years ago and have been kind of working my way into the market and learning the ropes. Oh, good. Doug, can you please uh, describe for us and tell us the difference between Native American art and the Western art, because they're two distinct categories? Well, obviously, most American Indian art or Native American art is created in the West, because that's where most of the Native Americans live. At the same time, it's really a separate genre mm -hmm. from Western art in which we typically think of Anglos painting Indians or cowboys. Scenes. And yes, exactly. Now, you just finished appraising uh, the Hewning Family Collection for the Center of the Southwest Research for the Zimmerman Library. Tell us a little bit about that collection, if you would. That collection was composed of uh, accounting records primarily from the Hunane Mercantile and Ranching Company in Los Lunas. And the period covered by those records was 1868 to 1940. When I first took on the assignment, the idea of appraising accounting records now, sounded a little... It turned out to be one of the most fascinating assignments that I've ever completed. I say that for a couple of reasons. One, the Hunings were from Germany. They immigrated to the, to the United States in the eight, late 1840s and late 1850s. The Los Lunas Hunings came in 1859. They established the Huning Mercantile Company in 1868. They did not have counter tickets or a machine in which they could enter the purchases, so they very carefully noted in the ledger and we have a, each a shot. item in a, in a, a uh, customer's visit. Here, here's one of the wow. pages. Yes, exactly. By the, time, by the time I had gone through about 15 years, when I saw Larry Aarons, uh -huh. I would know what you were going to purchase. I because see. Because I had been following you for the previous 15 you, years. You knew my buying patterns back exactly. in those days. Exactly. It, it turned out to be a fascinating <laughs> thing. I mean, the people stepped right out of the pages of those accounting records. What kind of things were they buying from the Hunings? Uh, basically, staples. Uh -huh. You know, coffee, bacon, flour. But the, the Hunings also had a large ranching uh, enterprise going on. They were running up to 80,000 sheep at one time. Huh. Mm -hmm. They had a flour mill south of Los Lunas, to which they had dug a seven and a half mile ditch to get sufficient drop to power the mill efficiently. They were a very, they were a very uh, 
ambitious pair of brothers, much like the Hunings who settled here in, in oh, Albuquerque. This is fascinating. Sounds like they're very industrious. So who is Charlie Russell? That's a great question. Charlie Russell is a great guy. And if Charlie Russell were alive today, you would want to have him on your program, not just once, but every week. Mm -hmm. Because he was a wonderful raconteur and a wonderful Western artist. He came west to Montana at the age of 16 after per persuading his parents that school was not the thing for him. And uh, he, he and Frederick Remington became really the two iconic artists of the American West. You see their paintings and you immediately identify, ah, that's a Remington, oh, mm. that's a Russell. So what do we have here? This looks like a letter. This is a letter. It's an illustrated letter. Russell, <coughs> it's a self-portrait of Russell. Mm -hmm. he, had been, he had been sent some buffalo meat by a, a uh, friend in Montana, and he wrote this letter on Christmas Day, 1910, to thank his friend for sending the buffalo meat. That he is holding a miniature full-grown buffalo. It's not a it's not a depiction of a buffalo calf, but actually yeah. a full-grown buffalo in miniature. <laughs> and this letter did it sell at auction? Is this a valuable piece here? What are we looking at? It did not sell at auction. I actually sold. I represented the owner on this letter and sold it at private sale a month ago today. Nice. Can you reveal the price? I can. It sold for $150,000. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's reflective of the current market in Russell Letters. The, the uh, boom in the petroleum industry is beginning to show up in the Western art market. Hmm. Ah. These folks making some money in the oil business are buying Remingtons and Charlie Russells. Exactly. And some yes. of the other great artists of, of the West. Yes. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal the other day that uh, Detroit is selling, the Detroit Museum collection is being liquidated to satisfy some of the claims in the bankruptcy of the city. And there was a beer stat that had a very husky estimate. I can't remember what it was. But the reason that they expected to bring that kind of money is because of the oil boom. Hmm. What's hot, sculpture or paintings or both? Painting. Paintings? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because uh, who are some of the other Western artists that are well known and highly collected that we're not talking about here? Well, Drop you know, some in names. New Mexico, of course, we have the Tao School. Yes. We have Joseph Henry Sharp, who not only not only uh, was a Taos painter, but also journeyed to Montana in the late 1890s and did a number of paintings of crows and Blackfeet. And when asked why he was going to Montana by one of the other Taos artists, he said, well, this will last, referring to the Taos Pueblo. Montana will not. In that he was very correct because the the culture that he wanted to depict was already vanishing, and in fact, vanished shortly after he painted it. Hmm. Boy, wow! This is fascinating. I'm so glad you moved to the land of enchantment. Yes, I knowledge. am actually. Yeah, I'm really glad you're here. What um, and and are you available to appraise people's paintings and things if they have some uh, Western art? I am. Okay. I, I focus. I focus primarily on Western art, books. I appraise libraries and books of all, in all fields, uh -huh. but in art, my real strength is in the West. Beautiful. What's the most unusual item you've ever appraised? That's a very difficult question to answer. When I was in the auction business, I often, of course, had to do an appraisal before we we uh, auctioned an item so that the consigner would have some idea whether or not they wanted to go ahead and sell it at auction. And 
I suppose one of the more unusual items was a pen holder that was used in the signing of the 1839 California Constitution. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Doug Johns, everybody, Western art expert. Uh, you can find out more with the URL that right there. Albuquerque Arts and Entertainment Magazine, along with ABQ Free Press. They've combined forces now. Pick up a copy of ABQ Free Press. We brought you this segment today. Mr. Johns, thank you. Thank you. Please come and see us again. We'll do it. We'll be back with more Morning Brew after this.